You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money. We're on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, May 18th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyara.com. In studio right now, we have Holly Fern of Lynn Mac Commercial, and we're going to be talking about real estate investing. Holly, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, everybody in studio today has been here before. No first-time guests. It's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit about Holly. Holly is a third-generation real estate broker and property manager in Seattle at the Lynn Mac Commercial Office. She has over 25 years of personal experience as a property manager. She helps her clients acquire investment properties as well as finding tenants for them and manage those real estate uh, rental properties. She appreciates the relationships she develops with her clients. Holly is heavily involved in community service as well as being a Girl Scout troop leader. I always get a big smile on my face when I say that because Girl Scouts was really important to me. How fun. Well, let's get to know Holly a little bit. How did you get into real estate investing, Holly? Yeah, well, my grandfather was a real estate broker and investor, and he taught me a lot about real estate and property management. And he really impressed upon me that the real estate market is better than the stock market. So, you're, yeah, it's like gambling, right? The, the gains come back quicker and bigger than other investments anywhere else because no other investment can you leverage someone else's money and make instant equity on an asset that you don't own outright. So to make the most out of your investment is to hold on to it for the long term. Getting inspired by like the show Fixer Upper makes people excited about getting creative, but flipping homes in the short term makes the least amount of money in the long run. Holly, I that's exactly why I got into the mortgage business. I was financial advisor for four years. You know, six percent compound over time is great. That's all exciting and everything. But it's not like homes get me excited. It's tangible. You know, I flipped a couple homes. You make some big money over a couple months. There's just it just feels safer. Just feels like such a better investment. Um, you're not relying on world markets and what's happening in China. To a degree, we are with rates oh, and yep. things like that. <laughs> but but I mean, it, not necessarily on more of a micro level. You know, we kind of know what's going on, and I feel like there's less risk. So good on you for that. Yeah. yeah. That's a, real estate definitely is a great risk. I, I believe in the versification and having a little bit of everything, but yeah. unlike the stock and buying a stock, um, you really don't know what's going to happen. Real estate, it's if you keep the property um, long term and you hold on to that, the real estate market always goes up and down. It's guaranteed that we're going to have a drop in the market and guaranteed the market's going to recover. But where you lose money is you're forced to sell in a bad market. So you got to just hold it and get through those bad times. So Holly, what do most people ask you about? Uh, well, I'd say the first thing to know is that it's not all profit. It's slow and steady wins the race. But what they do ask me is usually what they what they could possibly rent their their new property for. Mm-hmm. And that really depends on the condition it's in. Some people, they really struggle with upgrading or putting some money into it to make mm. it market worthy. And yeah. others go to the ex- the other extreme and spend way too much and yeah. there's a happy median in between those those extremes to not waste your money of course holly in those instances how do you determine the price for rent on a property uh yeah so i look at what other rentals are listed for like days on the market how mm-hmm. much comparable homes have rented for so i estimate what the med- the median price is for a similar home so such as we would do for a, a house to sell. Um, but then I add or subtract what the amount is based on what the property features are, what it might be lacking. So having a garage is a must and not having a garage would limit the potential income. So mm-hmm. that's important. So how do you gather and get that information, Holly? Yeah, um, because I'm a Washington State licensed real estate broker, I have access to a lot of data. 
So not a lot of people use a broker to list their home to rent, but it's a great way to get a lot more exposure and get a property vetted renter uh, or vetted renter for their property. So they can negotiate and ex- execute a proper lease. And uh, the laws are constantly changing, such as the new eviction law that was just changed. So mm-hmm. it's best to work with a professional rather than trying to be your own chipper Joanna with respect to drafting <laughs> legal documents. So I don't suggest the DIY approach unless you read law for fun in your spare time. So true. <laughs> you know, Holly, one thing uh, has stayed the same from being a financial advisor to the mortgage industry, the, the famous question, when is the right time to invest? Now, we don't have a crystal ball, and if we did, we'd all be drinking Mai Tais on a beach somewhere. That's right. Um, but in your opinion, what is the right time to invest? The Yeah, the... The first thing I look at is the inventory. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's more homes listed than there is pending, then it's a good time to buy. But if there's not as many homes in the inventory and the market, it has less pendings, then there's listings that should sell. Also, buying between October and January is an excellent time to buy. Um, So is the summer. That's kind of when people who have priced their homes too high and they've been sitting on the market, they get a little desperate. Mm-hmm. So they're they're more likely to take a lower offer. Hey, I'm going to be drinking Mai Tais on the beach next month. I know. That's like your story of the year, actually. You I know. I've been trying to travel every <laughs> single month this year. It's, it's crazy. Good but for you, Tina. Anyways, back to you, Holly. <laughs> so how do you determine uh, the costs? Um, well, I... I always start with having an account. You need a you know account for holding the security deposit, uh, but it's also good to have a a slush fund. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good to have at least six months of rent withheld. So if any emergencies come up, it's not going to cause issues with with regards to you know having to liquidate that asset just to cover those expenses because a lot of things can happen. Um, but you should also expect to need to replace the flooring every 10 years and the paint every five years and, and those types of things. Also, depending on what kind of house, does it have a lot of turnover or is somebody going to stay there for a long time? Yeah, and that six months just as your, you know, your primary, it's kind of the, the staple you want to, and Keelan, you know this from uh, the investment side as well, you want to make sure that you have six months of reserves on everything that you have. And so you really want to be careful before getting into your investment property to make sure you have your own roof uh, taken care of, because again, the key is not to be forced to sell in a uh, adjusting market. Well, so Holly, in your opinion, when it comes to real estate investing, what are the risks that you see with real estate? Um, there's, there's a lot of nightmare stories I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a show on nightmare stories. <laughs> but, uh, really, it, I think it really comes down to insurance and, uh, mitigating risk. So that's all about what, what kind of coverage you have mm-hmm. and how well written your contract is. So, um, that, that's really kind of at the end of the day, what, what's important to, to handle those those kinds of risks but yeah there's risks from everything to a a chronic tenant who t- tends to want to have you file evictions and drags mm-hmm. that out that could be really expensive or something that happens that wasn't properly permitted and then suddenly that's expensive so so it's really looking at it, what are those possibility of those things are going to be, you know, like Laura talked about difficulty and really in everything that you do, there are the list of things that could happen and just really work with an expert that can advise you on those potential uh, challenges that come up so that you can be prepared for them or at best to minimize any of those going into your investment. But every investment is going to have a risk and a challenge. It's just understanding what those are and preparing the best that you can. Yeah. Yeah. So, Holly, um, obviously, investing in real estate as an investment property is not for everybody. Correct. Uh, different different things for different people. Yeah. Some people can't really stomach the eviction process. So maybe not having a long term rental, but maybe an Airbnb. But mm-hmm. I also feel like. People who are going to have an Airbnb should also be the person managing their own. I find that people who hire out management companies and don't have that connection with the property itself 
affects the rent, you know, the marketability. Interesting. Of so that's that the space. complete opposite of if you have a, an investment. Because I was just thinking when you said that you should always have a property manager. Majority don't. Uh, yeah. True investors do. They see the uh, benefit of hiring out a weakness and 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 really focusing on other things. But that's interesting. On Airbnb, you really want to manage that yourself. Yeah, and not that that's not for everybody either because yeah. that's a lot of work. Yes. So it <sighs> there's there's a fine balance. I mean, it's it's challenging to find sometimes a good workaround, but but yeah, there's so many different ways to invest and and it's just kind of what matches your personality type. Yes. Well, with an Airbnb too, it's like a business. Like when people come and go out of that, you got to if you stay on top of that as the one to make sure it meets your standards, then and I'm sure there's reviews with that and all kinds of stuff yeah. or it could be a downward spiral. Is that what you mean? When... Well, it's personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> Recently I stayed, you know, I, and I travel a lot. So yeah. when I get to stay in Airbnbs, I prefer being able to speak directly with the person who owns the unit. But mm. when people have to, you know, hire out that management company mm -hmm. and you have to not only deal with the management company, but also the owner, it's I see. It's very complicated and it's not not as pleasant. Not as pleasant stay. user yeah. friendly it sounds You're not like. Not getting a great rate if you have that <laughs> situation. <laughs> I love it. Well, what about people who want to invest uh, but don't have any money? Yeah, so uh, it's you know, we like to say real estate is a team sport. So mm -hmm. maybe somebody with money wants to invest but they don't want to deal with the house hunting and the managing and they just need somebody to do all of that and they can, you know, pair up and partner into situations. So there's lots of different ways to match up funds with investment opportunities. We call that sweat equity, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Holly, we've got a few minutes here uh, before we wrap up our time. And I'd love for you to kind of break down uh, questions that you might ask a potential investor that's looking at purchasing an investment property uh, and how to determine what property is going to be best for them personally. Yeah. So if they wanted to, say, start looking for a single family homes to mm -hmm. invest in uh, that you're really going to want to get places that are um, in a good value system that is going to bring equity sooner than later. Mm -hmm. So the, the places that I feel are already maxed out, probably not the best to invest in. Okay. Uh, but places in the outlying areas that are still affordable, mm -hmm. but are near schools and potential transit centers and things that are, you know, a lot of the zoning ch laws change. So those yes. are great places to invest in. So, yeah, wherever there is growth is where investments really should be considered. Yeah. What about people that are looking at investing in the condo market? Because that's got to be a, a whole nother and a lot more risk there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with regards to holding them as rentals, because yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of HOAs don't even allow having rentals or they have a rental cap or they have some crazy rules regarding getting a, a lease. In, yeah. And so you really have to pay attention to those uh, rules and regulations when you're, in, you know, looking to um, uh, invest in a condo. Yes, yeah. I'm working on the financing side. They better have a rental cap because otherwise they're going to have issues selling uh, properties in a lot of situations. And so, the moving fee is also something to be considered because yeah. uh, Seattle doesn't want us to charge that to the incoming renters. Yes. And in some cases, some of them are up to $1,200. Yeah, it's crazy. So you really have to, again, work with an expert, understand uh, what the laws are around for the rentals, make sure that you're getting into a good property that's going to be able to cash flow, make sure that you have those reserves so that you're set up in case something happens because um, there's always going to be something that comes up and just really understand what you're getting into. Um, but it's a great opportunity, as Holly said, to uh, get an investment and build some equity and have somebody else pay for that investment. So love that. Holly, thank you so much for coming in. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Yeah. And this is your host, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. And your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM at KKNW. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.